I'm going to tell you a little bit about Blackport, which uh, in 19, before 1983 in Iceland, everybody could go out and fish. Like I could do it, she could do it, he could do it. Uh, after 1991, so like eight years later, a new system was put in place and then only a handful of people could go and fish. So that meant I can't fish, she can't fish, he can't fish. And from 1991 until today, uh, the majority of the fishing in Iceland is owned by maybe 10 families. And they're not American rich, they're like China rich. You know, their wealth is incredible. But still in the constitution of Iceland it says that the fish belongs to everybody. So everybody in Iceland thinks that the fish belongs to everybody. But it doesn't. And we were once uh, producing a feature film and we got uh, uh, one, of, one of the guys who owns all the fish in Iceland, he, he sponsored the film, uh, gave us a little bit of money and, and I was at his office and it's overlooking the ocean and we were talking about the fishing industry etc. And, and, and then he says, look out there, look at the sea. Everything in that sea belongs to me. Not you, not your mother, not your grandmother, but me. And he was not being, he, he was not really being a dick about it. He was just saying, that's the way it is. And until something changes, that's the way it is. And I, like all Icelanders, always thought like, you know, I, I don't understand what happened. We do not understand what happened. We do not understand why, why, why it is like this. And these guys, these families, they own the biggest media in Iceland, so their propaganda is massive. And I, I remember after the financial crash in Iceland in like 2008, 9, I was coming home, uh, I've been shooting some, something elsewhere uh, in the UK, and I was coming home, and uh, I was in the taxi, and the taxi driver was, uh, we were talking about the crash and how fucked we were, and uh, you know, uh, and he said, well, thank God we have the fish. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we sat silent for a while and I said, but, but is it ours? And he was like, no, fuck, it isn't. <laughs> so we, we thought we'd, we'd have to investigate this. Like, we have to understand, because we're now like, uh, we're probably, like, we're the second generation uh, since this all happened. And then there will be a third and a fourth and it just, it'll disappear. And it's just like this because it's always been like this and, you know, so we're losing the opportunity to kind of like investigate it. So we created Blackport. So Blackport is a series where we have a group of friends in the 1980s who go into the um, business of fishing. And it's, everything in the series is inspired by true events. So the way they get into the, the industry, is a true story. Um, and through these friends, uh, during that time in the 80s, we will see how, how they go from like being a collective, you know, and entrepreneurs doing this together, and then at the end of our series, one person will have full ownership over the fish, and will have betrayed everybody else, and even um, killed one of the guys in, in the process. So we're hoping that by doing this series, with 90% watching in January 2020, <laughs> people will grab their pitchforks, go out onto the streets and say like, fuck this, we're taking it back. So this is our, um, this is our, um, this is our kind of like, uh, we're, we're trying to use the art to, to make a very entertaining, very commercial, because the 80s in Iceland were amazing, and, and Sigurio knows all about that, because he, he had a punk band in the 80s, uh, and uh, was living in one of these small fjords, 
And all these small towns in the fjords were like booming with life in the 80s because everybody was there working in the fishing business. You could go there and you could work for a couple of months and you could go to Reykjavik and buy an apartment. I mean, it was like, it was like gold digging times. And then after 1991, what has happened is like, he owns a fishing quota in the West Fjords, let's say in 1995, he doesn't want to do the fish anymore. So the guy living in the East Fjords buys his quota, takes it to the East Fjords, so there's no more fish in the, in the, in the West Fjords. So there's no more work in the West Fjords. And this town just whoosh, has nothing. And that's happened repeatedly all over Iceland. But back to the 80s, I mean, these towns were booming. There were like so many young people came to these towns. People from all over the world came to the town. I mean, uh, there was like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And from the captains, you'd get speed so that you could work all day in the fish factory. Um, and then, um, you know, the accidents, there was no health and safety. So people were losing arms. People were, you know, if you wore a, a, a life-saving vest on, uh, on, on a boat, you were a coward. So you'd take it off and then the wave would take you and that's the end of your life. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 these were really colorful times. Um, so it's very exciting for us, and, and everybody who's, uh, who's uh, older than like 45 in Iceland used to work in these towns during these booming years. So everybody is very nostalgic, and it's very, very close at heart to a lot of people. And it's, and it's fun times to write about because we were so particular, like there was no beer allowed in Iceland in the 80s. We only had, uh, we never had TV on Thursday. There was no TV in July. So, you know, there's a lot of like, if you've seen Goodbye Lenin, the film, uh, it's a bit like that, you know, the old Iceland was very different to the new Iceland. Uh, so we started developing this, and when I say we, it's me and Nina, so we have a company in Iceland that are, that are doing this. And uh, the, the problem with finance, like you all know, is that the starting process is, the, is so expensive and like you never get the money when you kind of need it to develop stuff, and especially not in Iceland. So we've been doing a lot of theater like all over the world and we've been very lucky and very successful. So we made some money from that. So we spent a lot of money from that developing this series. And we got writers like on board. We had a writer's room and there was a writer from Norway and then we wrote it and then it wasn't good enough. So we rewrote it and it still wasn't good enough but different. So we, you know, fired the writers, uh, but in, in a good way, you know, we just had the talk. Um, uh, and then we'd spend a, uh, we spent a lot of money on it, uh, so, we, so, so I think we'd spent like 50,000 euros on a round and, and, and doing this to 50,000 euros, you know, let's start again. And the problem was like, fuck, where do we find writers? Because there's not a lot of them. But the novelists, we found one, and he'd also been um, running the main paper, the independent paper in Iceland, who's not linked to the Quota Kings. Uh, and he came on board, and we rewrote the whole thing, and it was like, bingo, really good, and really captured what we're after. And now, because I've, I think they only gave me like 15 minutes, so I don't want to drag it out too long, but, but we have DR Sales on board, and Roof, the main channel, is also aboard. And uh, we need to gather like six, seven million euros, preferably, to make eight episodes. We're halfway there. Uh, we've made some. Uh, we've made. Uh, we're hoping that MIPCOM now in, in October in, 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 in Cannes will 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 close the gap. We have we have some big interest from 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 big players, and we're rewriting the like second draft now, and it's just getting better and better. Uh, and I know I shouldn't say that as a creator, but uh, I really think so. Um, and yeah, so so we're we're in that difficult process now where we need to close a gap and if they say no and can then we just have to find other ways but if they say yes and can then we'll start shooting in March next year and um, yeah so that, that that's our Blackport series so so if you have any money and want to help finance a revolution Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign you right know now. just uh, <laughs> you're known for your revolutions right you're you're out in the street regularly like protesting? I'm starting a crowdfunding campaign right now. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So yeah, do you have any questions or? Um... Yes. You were saying like um, 
when you start working on the uh, series with those writers that they it wasn't working i mean the need to go to, into specifics but i'm very curious to know what was the problem um what wasn't working that made you um well you know fire yeah very people. good question what wasn't working what wasn't working was the the problem is because what happened when, when this transition happened has to be really, really clear. And as an audience member, you just have to get it. You have to watch it and you have to mix the drama. So the drama was good and the, and the, and the, and the emotional journey of the characters, they were all, you know, it was all sort of there. But kind of the, the problem, the, the, you know, the, 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 like sneaking in the social kind of, uh, the social issues or, 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 or the political issues that happened at the time weren't there. Uh, and understandably, because it's 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 a it's a big and it's a complex thing. Um, so they they were they, I think they were just more writing. They, they got stuck in writing, you know, drama characters. But but we were lacking like, you know, it's like doing a, a, a crime series and nobody's been killed. So we we needed the murder. Hi, congratulations on the project. It sounds really really exciting. And I wanted, I, I'm asking myself, you mentioned that these families are so powerful and own media and so and so. Haven't you encountered any opposition coming from them, their media, anything? I mean, for example, the, the main broadcaster in, in Ireland, aren't they influenced by these people? They, they don't really know about <laughs> it yet. <laughs> you know. Don't tweet, and, uh, don't tweet about it. And, and, and I would never give this speech in Iceland. <laughs> I would never say it like this in Iceland. So, and, and regarding the media, they are brave. The guys who are running it now, they realize it, but they, they're brave about it still. And, um, and it is government money that runs the channel. So, but they, they have no idea that we're doing it. Um, and then especially, and, 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 and just to wrap that on, we have like a season two and a season three. So season two is like, they bring the fish money into the banking system, and then that's season two. And then season three is after the collapse of the banking system. So it's all the same money. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the fucking cod that, uh, that uh, messed us all up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how much uh, did you kept from the first two drafts? You mentioned that they developed uh, the drama and the characters and uh, the new writer came in. And how is this transition? So between writers, uh, it was uh, the only thing that was left in, uh, uh, in the rewrite was the, the, the name of the two characters. And we even like thought about changing it just so there would be no connection, uh, just to make it easier on the on the credits, like when we get there. Because if it's successful, everybody will go like, "Hey, I'm a part of this." But if it's a failure, and you know, then they don't care. Hi, uh, sorry, I'm a I'm a film uh, student right now, and there's a debate that always comes up in in our classes, and it's like how to make something so local. In this case, it's maybe not so local; it's more national, but it's a very specific problem. And how do you, in a narrative way, how do you make people that is not in Iceland or uh, have any connection with Iceland care about that? Well, I think be because it's a story of betrayal of friends and and uh, and. Um and 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 local politics that kind of affect a whole nation and then the whole world. Uh, so so I think by having it super local, I, I think there's a I think it makes it interesting. I, at least we know that from our theater production, we've made very local theater stuff, and that's been super global. So uh, so the joke in our company is always just like think local, be global. So I think the local thing, I, and even like when you go on the markets, like everybody is looking for the local stuff. I mean, even, now it feels like in the, in the old Icelandic films, you would always have like German actors or whatever to kind of open up the market, but th then it just loses ownership. Then, you know, who does it belong to when, once it's uh, international? I have kind of the same question. How do you make a, a TV show about uh, the fish mafia in Iceland go global? on a technical level, maybe using English, which is a 
something we're seeing a lot in the Scandinavian production in Iceland, Norway, Sweden. Using, are you planning to use uh, English in, in the production, in the TV series? As a language? As a language. No. 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 Just Icelandic. <laughs> because, like, also, it's, it's a story for Iceland. You know, we need this story. I feel, I've, because I, I, don't, I, didn't understand, I don't know what happened. I need to understand it. So it needs to be in Icelandic mm -hmm. for myself and for, you know, my kids or... or uh, so, so no, there's no, I mean, there could, we could have easily gone English because there were so many people from like Australia and whatever that came and worked there, but we just don't want to distract the story by it. And so often it's so obvious when, you know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Here comes, uh, but, and we, we tried it once in the theater. We had, uh, Elena Naya from Spain be in a production with us in Iceland and Gael Garcia. Bernal, they came to Iceland and we did an um, Icelandic production uh, <laughs> based on the Swedish film uh, The Commune, like um, by Lucas, um, yeah, together, Lucas um, Mudison. And that worked because, but we're not going to go that way now. It's just hardcore Icelandic. <laughs> they drink milk. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks. For your passion and for making a show with an impact.